Hello, cash paid for supplies transaction. We are going to record the transaction of cash here being paid by us, the company, to a vendor for supplies. The supplies, in this case, I'm going to say are computer ink. So we're receiving computer ink. We are paying cash for that transaction. We're going to record this in terms of the accounting equation. That account equation being assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We are currently in balance before the transaction with total assets of 86,555 being all that's in the assets being what's in cash and that equals liabilities of zero plus the total equity which includes 70,000 capital uh, 17.5 revenue minus the expenses at this point in time of 420 and utilities of 525 giving us a assets equal liabilities plus owners equity and a net income at this point in time of uh, 16,555. Now, we're going to record this transaction. Every transaction is going to have at least two accounts that will be impacted, and every transaction will be in such a way that the accounting equation will remain in balance. First question is, is cash affected? We can see here, cash is affected. Here's the company, cash going away from the company. Cash, therefore, is going down. So we're going to say cash here going down by the 245 in this case. What's the other side of the transaction that will be impacted in this case? And if we look through our uh, list of accounts here, we can see supplies is over here. It's in the assets section. So we know that assets are going down because cash went down. But we also know that supplies is also in the assets section. It looks like we purchased supplies. It's going up. Now that could be unusual to some people. You might be saying, well, supplies doesn't seem like an asset. It seems like an expense. And there will be a supplies expense. Why is it we're recording supplies as an asset and not an expense? Supplies is going to be kind of our introduction to inventory, meaning that ideally we should put supplies on as an asset because when we purchase, for example, the ink, we haven't yet used the ink. It hasn't helped us to generate revenue in this time period, and according to the matching principle, we should not expense it until it helps us to generate revenue. So if we're buying uh, supplies that are significant material to us, it's best for us to put them on as an asset and then expense them as they are being consumed. If, on the other hand, the supplies are something small like paper clips, even if we buy a year's worth of paper clips, we're probably not going to put them on as an asset and then expense them because we'd have to count them and then expense them as we use them, and that would be too time-consuming, and it would not have a significant impact on the financial statements if it was such a small dollar amount. However, if it's a large dollar amount, if it's something like a computer ink that we use a lot, it may be best for us to then track that because it could have a substantial impact on our performance when we're when we're measuring our net income and our performance from time period to time period this is an unusual transaction in, in which case assets went up and assets went back down one reason why the accounting equation is not quite as effective as debits and credits because you can see this transaction if we were just to say what happened to the accounting equation we'd say well nothing happened nothing happened to assets nothing happened to liabilities nothing happened to equity although two accounts were impacted one account assets went down the other account in asset supplies went up. So cash went down, supplies went up, two assets happened, no impact on the accounting equation overall, although two accounts are impacted. What's going to be the effect then on total assets, liabilities, and equity? None. Total assets add up to zero if we take this and this and subtract them out. Liabilities, nothing happens, and equity, nothing happens. So a transaction happened, no impact on assets, liabilities, or equity. Obviously then no impact on net income. If we were then to add up the accounts and look at the balance then, we've got cash, 86,555 minus the 245 paid for supplies gives us the 86,310. And then we're going to bring down everything else. So 0 plus 0, 0, 0 plus 245 in terms of supplies means we are at supplies of 245 at this point. Liability, 0 plus 0 equals 0. Equity, 70,000 plus 0 equals 70,000. Revenue, 17,5 plus 0 equals 17,500. Wages, 420 negative plus 420, 0 equals 420 negative, and utilities, 525 results in 525. The ending balance should then be in balance because we are now at total assets 86,310 plus the 245, giving us the 86,555 equals liabilities, 0 plus 70,000 plus 17,5 plus minus 420 minus 525 gives us the 86,555. Total assets equal total liabilities plus owner's equity. What are we at in terms of revenue at this point? Same point we were at beforehand. We have the revenue 17.5 minus the 420 wages expense minus the 525 utilities expense means net income how we're doing at this point in time is 16,555.